Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the D1 Milano, the new automatic version of the Automatico, um, Italian I suppose, or Spanish. Um, but it's, D1 Milano is a brand from based in Italy, I believe. Um, I've been reviewing some of their watches in the past and I think the quality is pretty good. Um, I've been pretty surprised by the quality of their watches. They're kind of very Gerald, Genta-ish, kind of, you know, Nautilus kind of styled. Um, but they're pretty decent watches for the money. And today we have the new version, which comes in a whole flavor of different colors. It's way thinner than the previous automatic version, has a better movement, and also has a sapphire crystal. So I'm going to go through some of the changes of the new model, which is uh, a bit nicer in my opinion, has a better movement and such. And uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty much the same watch, but some, you know, big changes going on. Here's the standard box the D1 Milano actually comes in. It's a cardboard box, nothing too special. Inside the box, you can open it up. As you can see, everybody took the watch out. You do get your warranty right here in the watch on a pad. Pretty simple. Closes just like that, and that's pretty much it. Now, here's the watch in question today. Very, very nice blue dial, as you can see here. Now, I'm going to go through the differences between the old automatic version, which I previously reviewed, and the new automatic version, which I have in my hand today. So, the old one, as you can see, only came in a matte black dial. And it also had a thickness of 11 millimeters, while this has a thickness of 9.8 millimeters, making it much thinner. Uh, some people do like that. Another change we do have also is with the crown, as you can see here. The crown is now in octagon shape, while the previous one was a hexagon shape, as you can see there. Um, not a huge change, but you know, small changes, as you can see here. Also, the old ones did come in a uh, silver gunmetal rose gold and a stainless steel bracelet with a rubber strap. While this one does only come with the bracelet and it comes in a bunch of different dial colors, it does come in uh, black, uh, soleil black, they call it, soleil blue green. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with a standard stainless steel bracelet and case. So that's some of the main differences. Now getting into some of the other main differences, as you can see, I'm going to flip to the case back here. This version does have an exhibition case back, uh, which is held down with screws. And while the old version had a solid case back. While we're here, taking a look at the movement, this one has the Miyota 9015, as you can see with the custom D1 Milano rotor. While the old version had the NH35. So this is a bit of a step up in terms of price of movement. Now, these movements are more expensive. It's a high beat movement. It beats at 4 hertz instead of 3 hertz, like the NH35. It does feature hacking and a quick set date, just like the NH35, but it's a bit of a better movement. It has a smoother sweep of that seconds hand, as you can see going around the dial right now. It is running. Uh, this movement, you get about a 40-hour power reserve, hand winding, hacking, and yeah, it beats at 4 hertz. It's a bit more, I don't know, it's a bit higher end movement, I'd say, as you can see through the exhibition case back. Some nice striping on the main plate. Also, they put a custom D1 Milano rotor. Now, those are the main differences, obviously. Um, you know, you're getting a thinner watch. Uh, the old one was a bit thicker, uh, 1.2 millimeters thicker than this model. So, you know, some people might like that, some people might not. I think it's a nice upgrade. I really like, really like the new dial colors. This blue is quite stunning, especially when the light hits it with those applied polished markers. We get um, a little bit of loom on the hands, but that's about it, as you can see. The markers are faceted and highly polished. You get a long sweeping seconds hand as well, a matching date window, very simple D1 Milano printed below 12, automatica uh, above 6 o'clock. Um, but yeah, uh, getting into some basic dimensions uh, again of this model in hand. So now we'll take a look at this model as you already know the differences. Also the bracelets are exactly the same, they're very fluid, uh, they're held in by pins but they're very nicely finished. The finishing on the bracelet is just as good as the finishing on the actual case. Um, you're getting that same uh, deployment or butterfly style clasp here, as you can see, where it closes and signed D1 Milano. Um, so yeah, also you're getting that 50 meters of water resistance just as the older model. So in terms of specifications, it's 41.5 millimeters in terms of diameter, just like the older previous model. It's 9.8 millimeters thick against the old 11 millimeters. It also has a lug to lug about 49 millimeters and has a bracelet that tapers down about to around 18 millimeters, uh, 20 to 18, uh, which is not that bad. This one also is a bit lighter at 20 grams lighter, considering that thickness at 150 grams on the bracelet unsized, 
The previous one had 170 grams weight, so it's a little bit heavier, 20 grams difference. Uh, might be noticeable for some, might not be for others. Um, but yeah, so now let's take, actually take a look at this new model. This model does have a sapphire crystal uh, on the front. On the back, there's a mineral crystal for the window. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty simple watch. Obviously, it's following those, you know, Gerald Genta kind of Nautilus styling here um, without the dial. Um, but the bracelet kind of has that, you know, AP style going on with it, uh, which is becoming pretty popular now. It's a very fluid bracelet, as you can see here. It's articulating. It's really nicely finished. I must say they did a very good job on the bracelet and the finishing. The edges are very nicely done, as you can see there. Everything is really squared off nicely, and they po they uh, polish a little bit on the edges, so it's not sharp, which is very nice. The custom clasp here uh, folds over from one side. It's really secure, I must say. Listen to that snap. And then it conforms nicely to say D1 Milano, uh, which is pretty cool. That actually functioned the uh, Miyota 9015, if you guys aren't familiar with this. Very good grip on this crown, easy to screw out, has a nice pop out, as you can see there, very nice pop. You can self-wind it in the first position, very easy with this crown. You can pull out one position, and you can flip through that quick set date. Then your final position, you get hacking, and we can set the time precisely here. Very legible dial, very easy to read. Set it to 1010, push that back down and screw that back in with ease. Now the watch for the most part is brushed just like the older one, but we do have that polishing on the sides of the bezel, uh, which is pretty cool here. It gives it a nice look, a bit of a more luxurious look as you can see, but the actual case brush finish is very good. It's very smooth. Uh, there's no sharp edges or anything like that. Their finishing is really top notch. And as well as the finishing on the actual case back, as you can see there, everything looks very professional and well put together. Um, so, you know, they're doing a pretty good job on their case finishing and, you know, they're trying to keep the watch the same but improve slightly on each different model, uh, which I think is a good idea. If you have a proven successful model, why not just improve it more and continue with the same kind of model? Uh, and that seems to be what a lot of successful brands do. Uh, but anyway, on my 6.5 inch wrist, I'm going to throw it on my wrist, show you guys exactly how it fits this new model. And let's take a look. I just wanted to show you on my wrist today, I just got this bracelet in from Hamilton. Uh, this is the actual bracelet for the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical, uh, so it matches very nicely with the watch, as you can see. it. Um, I will probably be showing this on a future video, but this was what is uh, on my wrist today. On my 6.5 inch wrist, as you can see, it fits nicely across. Um, I, it's pretty decently fitted. I would say I, I might be able to go even a little bit smaller. Uh, that's just my wrist. I have a pretty small wrist at 6.5 inches. I mean, it's definitely very wearable. As you can see, that end portion curves down, and the bracelet conforms very nicely to the wrist. doesn't pull hair or anything like that. And you get that nice kind of gleam with this bracelet and the way that the brush finishing is done. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, as you can see, very thin profile looking top down on it. Uh, definitely can slip under a cuff for business attire if you wanted it to. Um, so that's always a good thing. Also, it's kind of a sporty everyday daily watch with a pair of shorts. You can definitely pull that off as well. But nonetheless, very comfortable on the wrist. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new D1 Milano Automatic. I think it's a pretty cool watch. It's very well made. Um, I believe the price is around 800 US dollars. I really like the blue variant, which you see in front of you. And there's a green dial variant, which is really nice. Uh, I will drop a link to the website down in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, just very well made, a very well made watch. Um, very well made. Um, yeah, nothing really more to say about that. The finishing is on point. We're getting a Miyota 9015, which is a very good movement. We have an integrated bracelet, a very good integrated bracelet. As you can see, this thing is like crazy, crazy articulating. Very nice. We get a nice sturdy clasp. We get the 9015 through the exhibition case back. Case back is done very nicely. Uh, I think they did a, they did a pretty good job on the case back. But yeah, um, all around, I think it's a pretty decent watch. You know, everyone might have different thoughts on price ranges and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's a very well-made watch that's going to work and last for you a lifetime. You know, the 9015 is a movement that can last years and years and years without servicing, just as the NH35 on the previous model. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below as usual. This is Watch Addiction Watcheries with the new D1 Milano watch called the Automatico and Italia. <laughs> okay, maybe that, I don't know. Anyway, guys, I will see you on the next video. 
And um, if you have any questions, definitely drop it in the comment section below. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys real soon. Bye.